Have you ever looked up at the night sky and wondered, um, wondered what those little lights are, wondered why things fall down instead of up? These simple questions are the seeds of physics. For more than 2,000 years we have been asking them. Simple observations of the world around us. The deepest mysteries of space and time. Our story begins in ancient Greece, over 2,300 years ago. Here, a great thinker named Aristotle tried to explain everything. He was a philosopher, a lover of wisdom. He used logic and reason to understand the world. Aristotle believed you could figure out the universe by careful thought. He wrote about why rocks fall, why smoke rises. He said everything had a natural place it wanted to be. A rock's natural place was the earth, so it fell. Smoke's natural place was the sky, so it rose. This was an early form of physics, natural philosophy. Aristotle's ideas made a lot of sense to people. He argued the earth was the center of everything. The sun, the moon, the stars all moved in perfect circles around us. Look up at the sky. It seems to circle us. For nearly 2,000 years his teachings were accepted as truth. He was the ultimate authority on how the world worked. His method, observation, logic, not experiments. He didn't think testing was necessary. If ideas were logical, they must be true. That approach had limits. For example, he believed heavier objects fall faster than lighter ones. Drop a big rock, drop a small pebble. It seems logical the big rock hits first. It feels right. For centuries this was taught as fact. Questioning him was like questioning common sense. A powerful idea can shape thinking for a very, very long time. For a long time, Aristotle's ideas remained the final word. But then, during the Renaissance, people started to think differently. One of these people was an Italian man named Galileo Galilei. Galileo was not content just to think about the world. He wanted to test it. He was a firm believer in experiments. There is a famous story. He went to the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. He dropped two balls of different weights. A heavier ball, a lighter ball. He wanted to see if the heavier one would land first, as Aristotle said. They landed at almost the same time. This was revolutionary. It showed old ideas, even Aristotle's, could be wrong. The true test wasn't just logical reasoning but whether it matched observation. His greatest tool for observation was a new instrument, the telescope. He did not invent it, he heard about it and made a much more powerful version himself. He pointed his telescope at the night sky and saw things no one had seen. He was the first to see mountains and craters on the moon, proving the moon wasn't a perfect sphere. Then he pointed at Jupiter. He saw four small points of light circling the giant planet. He watched them night after night. He realized they were moons. This discovery was huge. It showed not everything revolved around the Earth. Moons moved around Jupiter. This directly challenged the Earth-centered idea. Galileo's work supported Copernicus's older idea that Earth and other planets revolved around the Sun. It was a dangerous idea and brought him trouble with the Church. Despite the risk, he published his findings. He wrote, In Questions of Science, the authority of a thousand is not worth the humble reasoning of a single individual. He trusted what he saw with his own eyes. His insistence on observation and experimentation changed science forever. To understand the universe we must look at it, measure it, and be willing to let evidence change our minds. He opened a new window onto the cosmos. After him, science would never be the same. He laid the foundation for a new era of physics. After Galileo showed the importance of experiments, the stage was set for the next giant leap. This leap came from an English scientist named Isaac Newton. Newton was born in 1643, the same year Galileo died. It was as if the torch of science was passed from one to the other. Newton was a brilliant but quiet man. He spent years working in near isolation at Cambridge University. During this time, he developed some of the most important ideas in the history of physics. He wanted to find a single set of rules that could explain motion on Earth and in the heavens. Newton gave us his three laws of motion. These laws describe how things move. The first law says an object will stay still or keep moving in a straight line unless a force acts on it. The second law explains how force, mass, and acceleration are related. The third law says that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. These simple-sounding laws were incredibly powerful. For the first time we could precisely calculate the motion of objects, from a thrown ball to a rolling cart. They became the foundation of engineering, allowing us to build bridges, machines and buildings with confidence. But Newton's most famous discovery was the law of universal gravitation. He wondered, if gravity pulls an apple from a tree, could the same force reach the moon? Could that keep the moon in orbit? 
he realized yes, gravity is a universal force acting between any two objects, explaining apples falling and planets circling the sun. Newton's work painted a picture of the universe as a giant, perfect machine, a kind of cosmic clock. If you knew the positions and speeds of all the parts, you could, in theory, predict everything that would ever happen. This idea, the clockwork universe, dominated physics for the next 200 years. Newton, deeply religious, felt he was uncovering God's divine plan. He wrote, Gravity explains the motions of the planets, but it cannot explain who set the planets in motion. For two centuries after, um, Newton, Physicists used his laws to explore the world. They studied heat, they studied sound, they studied materials, but there were still mysteries, electricity, and magnetism. People knew them, but how were they related? Then, a Scottish scientist arrived, James Clerk Maxwell. He came in the mid-19th century, thoughtful, poetic, a mathematical genius. He gathered results on electricity and magnetism, building on Michael Faraday, who showed a changing magnetic field creates an electric current. Maxwell translated those discoveries into four equations. The equations were a revelation. Electricity and magnetism were not separate. Two sides of one coin. Electromagnetism. His equations predicted a disturbance would travel as a wave. He calculated its speed. It matched the speed of light. Not a coincidence. Maxwell realized light is an electromagnetic wave. It explained light and predicted other invisible waves, radio, microwaves, x-rays, gamma rays, forms of light our eyes can't see. Today, radio, Wi-Fi, and cell phones all work because of electromagnetic waves, described by Maxwell's four equations, the peak of classical physics. By the end of the 19th century, many physicists felt their work was nearly finished. Newton's laws explained motion and gravity. Maxwell explained light and electromagnetism. It seemed only a few small details remained, but those details would crack the entire foundation wide open. A young, unknown patent clerk in Bern, Switzerland, Albert Einstein, known for a rebellious spirit and deceptively simple questions. In 1905, his miracle year, Einstein published several groundbreaking papers. He introduced special relativity. The speed of light is the same for everyone, no matter how fast they are moving. For this to be true, our common sense ideas about space and time must be wrong. Time can slow down. Space can contract for fast-moving objects. Space and time aren't fixed and absolute, they are interwoven into space-time. From this came the most famous equation, E equals mc squared. Energy and mass are two forms of the same thing. The speed of light is huge and squaring it makes it vast. Even tiny mass can release enormous energy powering the sun and nuclear plants. Ten years later, he expanded to general relativity, a new theory of gravity. Gravity isn't a force pulling at a distance. It's mass warping space-time. Place a heavy ball on a trampoline. Nearby paths curve. The sun bends space-time. Earth follows that curve. Experiments including the 1919 eclipse confirmed, Einstein. Our understanding of space, time, gravity, and the universe changed forever. While Einstein rethought the largest scales, others explored the world inside the atom. At the century's turn, atoms were thought indivisible, but discoveries revealed complex inner structure. A pioneer, Marie Curie, with her husband Pierre, investigated a strange phenomenon. Certain elements emitted energy on their own. She called it radioactivity. Tireless in a simple shed, they painstakingly isolated the sources. They discovered polonium and radium far more radioactive than uranium. Radium glowed and poured out steady energy. This challenged the old view of unchanging atoms hinting at powerful forces inside. Curie was the first woman to win a Nobel, and the first person to win two physics and chemistry. Her research carried great personal cost. Unaware of dangers, long exposure led to her death. Her discoveries opened a new understanding of matter. The energy from atoms is the very energy Einstein's E equals mc squared explains, leading to x-rays and cancer treatments. Pure curiosity about glowing rocks transformed into tools that save lives linking atomic science to our daily health and well-being. The discovery of subatomic structure opened a new world. What they found made no sense under Newton's rules. A new set of rules was needed. Quantum mechanics. Developed by brilliant, often young scientist pioneers like Max Planck, Niels Bohr, and Werner Heisenberg. Planck's step. Energy comes in packets quanta. Not any amount, only discrete amounts. Bohr applied it to atoms. Electrons occupy specific levels. They jump between them. 
emitting photons explaining element colors, Heisenberg's uncertainty. Principle you cannot know exact position and exact speed at the same time. At tiny scales, particles don't have definite properties until measured. They exist in a haze of possibilities. Einstein objected, God does not play dice with the universe. Despite its strangeness, quantum mechanics is our most successful theory foundation of chemistry, materials, and all modern electronics, lasers, transistors, LEDs, everything runs on quantum rules. The pioneers revealed a universe not as predictable clockwork, but guided by probability rules for the smallest things in the cosmos. Our journey has taken us from Aristotle's Earth-centered universe to Einstein's curved space-time and the probabilistic world of the quantum. We've seen physics grow from simple logic to a complex mathematical understanding of reality. First, the classical world of Newton described the big things we see every day. Then two new worlds, Einstein's relativity for the very fast and massive, and quantum mechanics for the very small. Today, a grand goal is to unite them into a single theory of everything. Theories like string theory and loop quantum gravity are attempts, not yet complete or proven. We build incredible machines like the Large Hadron Collider to smash particles and glimpse new forces. We also look outward with powerful telescopes to solve cosmic mysteries. We've learned what we see is about 5% of the universe, the rest is mysterious dark matter and dark energy, shaping the cosmos. Finding answers is the great adventure of 21st century physics, there are more surprises to come, from Aristotle to Galileo to Newton to Curie to Einstein, each built on the last, giving us electricity, computers, and modern medicine.